Uh, obviously, kind of a roller coaster of a match. You know, you go down, then you go back up, then you go down. Um, I guess what what were you kind of looking for there in the last 15 minutes or so when it looked like you guys might be able to get an, another equalizer there, but just time ran out on you. Obviously, the, the the PK call was it was the softest PK call, and then you know Memo hits a great shot from outside. However, in that in that one play, um, transition moments for us were, were critical today, and I thought for the most part we did a great job. In that moment, we're talking about details, um, but you got to tip your hat off to to the goal he scored. Um, and then the third one is is I think the one that 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 we can do a lot better with um, and really managing the emotional, like you said, a roller coaster of a game and you want to get after it. And, and we kept our foot on the gas um, and in doing so opened up a lot of space in the middle where they found the switch um, and, and didn't clear the ball. Um, so again, I think uh, there's a lot of great things in this match. Uh, you know, I thought we controlled the game um, the way we, we, we wanted to get after it. Um, I, I think we just, weren't clinical in front of goal today. Um, and in the end, uh, I think that cost us. And then uh, this is the team's fourth loss at home this season already. Have you, uh, have you noticed a difference maybe in compared to last season uh, in, the, in these home games that have been played so far and kind of what's going on there? Yeah, I think every time you don't win at home, the, the, the pressure builds, you know? And I think you go away from home and there's no pressure. The pressure's on the home team, you know? And I think the guys want it so bad. And it's like anything. Uh, you can apply it to anything in life. Uh, when you want it that bad, sometimes your, your brain is being um, hijacked by your emotions. Um, and so it's finding that balance between being emotionally present uh, whilst still being really clear as to what the game state looks like. Are we up? Are we down? Um, and how to ma manage those moments better. Hey, Pablo. Um, you guys are on the road uh, this weekend against Austin. <clears throat> what uh, what changes do you look to make against them uh, away from home? Uh, yeah, we'll we'll just see how everyone recovers. You know, I think in in the last you know four games that we've played, we've had a bit of rotation, um, and and the guys that have stepped in there have done a really good job. Obviously, we have another game uh, midweek next week, um, which, which is an important game. So just trying to manage the load from from each player whilst. Um, putting out a group that, that, that we feel can get results. And I think that's, that's always the, the balance you're trying to strike. But uh, I feel really confident with, with all the guys in the group. And, and I think everyone's contributed in the last four games in, in a good way. Gotcha. And then who from tonight stood out to you as, as a, kind of a difference maker or someone who helped push the needle in the right direction? You know, again, I thought there was a lot of really good performances. I think the guys in the back did a good job. I think the guys in the middle uh, were, their, their industry was relentless. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of good combination play up front. Um, and at times, I feel like we were holding on to the ball too long um, and not running enough without the ball. Um, and I think we left a little bit on the table uh, as far as um, our, our, our decision making in the final third. Um, but we'll go back and look at the film. So again, I, I think everyone uh, put in a fantastic shift. You know, the game was there to be won. Um, and yeah. We'll look at the tape and, and, and move forward. Pablo, uh, no voy a hablar de, de, del juego, de lo que pasó, pero la pregunta que te quiero hacer, ¿tú hablas con tus jugadores que también tienen que tener reacción? Me refiero a cómo lo hizo el Galaxy hoy. ¿Ese penal lo cobra básicamente un jugador? Eh, lo va, lo presiona. Martín Cáceres, con la viveza del sudamericano, que tú sabes cómo es, va, lo presiona y llama a sus compañeros para que nadie vaya a sacar la pelota. Hacen un montón con el árbitro a poner presión. No veo jugadores del Real Salt Lake que vayan a ponerle presión al árbitro, especialmente con este tipo de árbitros. Hay que ir a ponerles presión. Hablas tú con ellos porque ya sabes que en el fútbol vale todo. Entonces... ¿Se tiene que hablar con ellos? ¿Hablas o no te hacen caso? ¿O, o qué pasa? No, yo creo que es en, en el fútbol en Estados Unidos no, hay, hay mucho más respeto para el, para el árbitro eh, y no, no entienden lo que hace la presión a, a un árbitro. Porque como jugador, 
O sea, para un entrenador, para, para decir que presiona al árbitro así, a veces en la liga, cuando, cuando nos juntamos antes de la, la pretemporada, di, dijeron que si hablan con el árbitro dos, dos jugadores, es un cartón amarillo. Y es, un, es, un, es una cosa muy delicada uh, discutir con el árbitro o empujar al árbitro con, con, con un poco de presión, porque al fin, lo que no quiero, porque también ese, ese es un, una... Como se dice, eh, eh, es un feeling uh, que hay que tener cómo hablar de manera eh, y eso lo sabe o no lo sabe, pero tener razón, eh, son momentos clave y tenemos que te, fijar, vamos no sé cuántos partidos sin un penal, sin un penal. Y para mí eso es eh, increíble que todos los equipos tienen cinco o seis penales y nosotros no, ni uno. Y había un, un empujón con el sábado en el primer tiempo, que yo, si yo estaba en la cancha, yo, yo, yo veo que el Pablo lo hace, yo veo que el Marcelo, el Domi, sí van a hablar al árbitro, eh, pero hoy día eh, no nos no dio ninguna atención y, y tiene razón, fue un momento clave. Question was in regards towards the pressure in terms of players talking to the referee, especially on calls that obviously are problematic. Um, I think that in America there's a lot of disrespect towards the refs and they don't understand what the respect. pressure does to a lot referee. Of respect towards the ref. Sorry, yeah. yes. For a coach to say that there's pressure towards the ref. If you talk to a ref, it's an automatic yellow. It's something that's a very delicate situation to argue with a ref because in the end we obviously don't want those feelings. You need to know how to be able to speak to them and you either know or you don't. We have many games without a PK and it's amazing how every other team has five to six PKs and we don't have any. Um, it's something that our players, obviously we do see them, someone like Damian, Marcelo, we do see them talk to the rest, but obviously today didn't go our way. Hey, Pablo, the team came out very strong after uh, Brugman's penalty and the halftime break, very aggressive. Uh, what was your message to everyone during halftime? No, just to be, to be more dynamic with the ball, take less touches on the ball, move off the ball. Um, and, and, and again, I said it's a team that's gone through a rough spell. Um, we got to respect them, but at the same time, if we put, if we stay on the front foot on both sides of the ball, we're, we're going to get into this game. Um, and again, I think that wasn't the issue. The issue is once we got on top, how we manage those important moments that that ended up costing us the game. Uh, preguntarte un poco con respecto a, a los goles. Hoy, después de tres partidos, el equipo volvió a anotar gol en casa. Eh, habían sido jornadas complicadas anteriormente, pero hoy creo que eh, se pensó mucho el momento de tirar a portería. Se, es bien sabido que le falta un muy buen delantero centro al equipo, pero ¿qué, ¿qué le dices tú? ¿Qué es lo que entrenan con respecto a la definición? Porque es lo que ha fallado en momentos claves para el equipo durante esta temporada. Sí, yo creo que eh, la, eh, lo entrenamos, lo venimos entrenando hace, no sé, seis semanas. Eh, enfocamos en, en el área grande, jugando 7 contra 5, espacio reducido, pero tomando la, la mejor decisión con presión. Y claro, en los entrenamientos no hay, no, hay, no hay el mismo presión que existe en el partido. Y por eso los jugadores con, que, que saben, saben. Y pues de, de mi parte como entrenador hay que seguir entrenando y tomando mejores decisiones. Porque habían dos o tres que Andrés hubiera tirado al arco y enganchó otro paso más. Y cada vez que enganchas, la defensa tiene tiempo para acomodarse. Y para mí, esos son los momentos momento clave, como hicieron en el segundo gol. Encontró un espacio de 25 metros y tiró un, sacó un tiro al arco. Y para, para mí es seguir enfocando en esa, en esa parte de, del juego. Y cuando, cuando, cuando tiramos en los entrenamientos, anda muy bien. Pero también la presión y la emoción del juego afecta a los jugadores. Question was in regards to the goals today after three games they score at home, but today it seemed to be a lot of overthinking before taking a shot. What do you tell the team in regards to that? I think we train it and we have been doing so in the last six weeks or so. We focus on the larger areas and doing so with pressure, but obviously in training there's not the same amount of pressure like in the game. And from my point of view, we have to keep training. There was two or three in which Andres could have shot it, but he took an extra step or two. And those are key moments in my opinion. For me, it's continuing to focus on that part of the game. 
Y también preguntarte, ¿has podido ver un poco los partidos de la Selección Sub-20 a, a Diego Luna? Eh, está recibiendo muchos elogios por parte de la prensa en general, eh, el equipo en sí está jugando muy bien. Eh, ¿Crees que podría ser el momento de quizás darle un poco más de minutos a Diego Luna ya que se reincorpora el equipo? Sí, yo creo que sí. Eh, yo creo que, como, como siempre, para mí los, jugador, los jugadores son los que se elijan para el, para el grupo, cómo entrenan, eh, cómo hacen en, en, en los entrenamientos, cómo juegan en los, en los minutos que tienen. Eh, y yo creo que la diferencia ahora es eh, que el, el Diego regresa con, con mucha confianza y yo creo que le ha faltado un poco de eso cuando, cuando ha entrado en los partidos. Pero claro, como, como todos los jugadores, está jugando bastante bien con los sub-20 y espero que llegue mejor que, que cuando se fue. In terms of whether or not you've been watching sub-20, Diego Luna receiving lots of press and attention, playing really well, and the team playing well as a whole. Could this possibly be an opportunity for Diego to get more minutes here with the first team? Yeah, I think, I think it's always up to the players to make that decision. It goes down to how they train, how they perform with the minutes they do get. The difference is that Diego will return with lots of confidence, and he was missing that beforehand. Watching the game, I have a feeling like looking to like the guys in the defense. They look like they they are having like a good communication. They have like coercion uh, between them. But when they in the attack, they have like opportunities to do like uh, good like opportunities to to score. Looks like they are missing like this communication between like Andres and, and Danny. And what do you think you guys can do t for them to be more like partner, like they work together and sometimes not try to finish in any way? Like just, like it doesn't matter who scores, who wins is the team. So I don't know, it's my feeling uh -huh. uh, about that. What do you think you guys can no, do? No, I, I think you're, you know, I think you're right. I think in the first half, you know, there's too many plays and this, this is what I was talking about at halftime is, Um, instead of moving the ball quicker, we're dribbling with the ball too much. And we're, 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 we're trying to make a, a 1v1 situation when there's no 1v1 situation. It's a rotate, find the weak side, get the defense moving, set it back, get the defense moving, rotate them again. And, and, and again, I think there's, there's a couple things to that. Uh, you know, I, I think obviously um, in Andres' case, we want him to, um, to be aggressive and to go to goal. But then, it, then it's the next decision that, that I think is, is, is eluding him. And, and that is all understood given his age, given his adaptation to our league. Um, and those are decisions that have to be made quickly. And so if you're looking to dribble, you'll always find space to dribble. If you're looking to combine, you'll always find a partner to combine with. So it just depends on the player who's on the ball and what he is predominantly um, accustomed to. And so the other part of that is um, because of our rotations, there's, there's been so many players, different players playing with each other, and that doesn't help the, the chemistry thing. So it, from a team perspective, it's great because everyone's getting a run. But as far as the intricacies of what you're talking about, I think it, it comes from the same group playing consistently over time to understand where D Danny likes to receive it or when Andres is here, what he likes to do when he's on the ball. And, and, that, and that'll just continue to take some time. Okay, my last question. I know there's a week, uh, but what is like your plan for the next game against Galax? Do you think you guys are going to put like the main team to play against them, or will like mix? Uh yeah, uh, you know I, I think we'll see how the guys recover. You know today, uh, tomorrow, um, and then obviously we have Austin. And then depending on how Austin goes, we want to, we, like we've done in all US Open games, I, I felt like we've put out a, a very good team. Um, and, and because we've had some, some really good performances, um, it starts to be a little bit blurry as the guys that play best with one another, um, which is a good thing and, and a difficult thing as well, because I think whatever team we put out there, it'll be a competitive team and a team that I believe will, will give us our best chances to win that game. Anyone via Zoom have any questions for Pablo? All right, thank you. Okay, thanks, guys.